G'day guys, it's Paul from Polyman Astro. And in today's video, what I'd like to do is take narrowband data and produce something that looks more like a traditional RGB image. So we get all the advantages of narrowband, that wonderful contrast and that wonderful structure, but we get a more traditional looking image rather than a, a, a false color kind of palette. So the way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna take um, telescope live data of M8, the Lagoon Nebula. Uh, and you can see the luminance image here of that. What I've already done is I've gone through my usual processing regime here. I've, I've already stretched the, the three channels, the HA, the O3 and the S2 using my traditional methods. Uh, you can watch my narrowband processing video uh, for how I do that if you'd like. Uh, and the idea is I've got the backgrounds and the kind of rough brightness values for, for each channel. So they, they kind of match overall and they're gonna balance nicely. And you can see I've, I've taken the stars out as well. Uh, I will say the luminance channel integrated all three channels together without rejection. Uh, that way I got some of the S2 structure in there as well as the HA, which is, is gonna be uh, nice. Again, what we want is the, the wonderful structure from uh, narrowband, but with a more traditional color palette. Um, so I remove those stars and stretch them independently. And, and now we're ready to, to work on the data. Uh, so what I want to do is instead of just mapping uh, to single channels, I want to do something where I'm mapping uh, to the, the different color channels, kind of like what I do with my 4X. Again, if you haven't seen 4X, then the, there's a link above. And in fact, this is what the 4X image ends up looking at, uh, looking like um, quite blue and yellow. Um, not quite my cup of tea for this image, to be honest, um, with this data anyway. But that, that's what the 4X palette would look like. And that's not just a simple match them to the individual channels. You, you're matching some HA to, to each of the RGB, some S2 to each, and some O3 to each as well. So the first thing I'm going to look at uh, method is what I'm going to call true color. And the idea here is that we're going to use some science to work on this a little bit. And if you dive into it, what you, what you discover is there's actually a fair bit of science behind the distribution of hydrogen in nebula. Um, and it's not just made up of hydrogen alpha. I'm sure most of us know that there's hydrogen beta out there as well, and you can actually get hydrogen beta filters, but there's also hydrogen gamma, um, and they're kind of the three most common. And we have a good idea of their, their kind of relative distributions in a, in a nebula. And what you can do then is you can work out in the CIE uh, space what that would look like based on those distributions uh, for hydrogen. And it turns out if you do that and convert it to RGB, then it looks like this. It's kind of a pinky purple color rather than uh, the red that you were probably expecting. It's definitely not salmon pink, which is often what you, you will see if you try and add HA directly to an RGB image. And in fact, it lines up quite well with what you'd see if you, you actually used an emission tube, say in your physics lab when you were at university and looked at hydrogen. It does tend to give this pinky glow. Um, so that, that, based on the science, is pretty close to, to how hydrogen would look to our eyes. Okay, sulfur we know is quite red. It's right in the deep red section. Um, so no surprise it's there. And O3, again, if you, there's, there's two, there's two predominant uh, wavelengths for O3. And again, if you run that through um, into the CIE space um, and then convert that to RGB, it's going to look roughly like this. Um, now you could probably argue whether it's going to look slightly more green or slightly more blue, but that's pretty much what it's going to look like. This one you can't see in emission tubes because uh, O3 is actually a, one of the forbidden lines. You're only going to see it in in these nebulous regions. Uh, but this is the color that you're expecting for those. So this is the image when I've combined those three uh, channels together, uh, done an LRGB and put the stars back. Um, and you can see that to me, that looks pretty much what I expect to see when I image in RGB for the Lagoon Nebula. You get that nice pinky blue kind of color. Um, so I think it's it's done a fantastic job based on the science and that looks pretty accurate and it matches exactly what I wanted. You get all the advantages of narrowband, that wonderful structure, 
in contrast, but in a more traditional RGB style palette. The other option, which I've listed over here as natural color, uh, is coined by Craig Stocks. So if you're on Facebook and you're in the astrophotography book, uh, group, then you probably know Craig. Uh, he posts fantastic images all the time. He runs the Utah Remote Desert Observatory. Uh, so he's got some fantastic scopes that most of us would probably dream of. Um, and he's imaging pretty much every night because of the skies there. Um, and he's come up with what he calls natural narrowband, uh, the natural narrowband palette. He works in Photoshop rather than PixInsight, but the, the, I could, uh, he, he actually posts the colors that he assigns to each of his channels. So you can easily use a color picker and, and work out what those are. And again, that's what these pixel math expressions are. I've done that for his HAs. Uh, his O3s and his S2s, and then I'll combine the image together at the end. And for him, his S2 looks a little bit more pink, closer to what our um, HA was here. So it's a little bit more pink than just pure red. His HA, he's chosen as yellow rather than um, a red or a green in traditional SHO. And his O3 is more blue than the the greeny blue that we had here so i think what he's trying to hit at with the o3 here is to kind of emulate uh reflection nebula because again our end goal here is to make it look a little bit more like a traditional rgb image so he's kind of hitting on the the reflection nebulosity rather than using it as actual o3 to to just get that that color that we'd expect from reflection nebulosity uh, and if you combine them together, and again, use the uh, the luminance here, the LRGB, you get something that looks like this. And again, that looks pretty close to what I, I'd expect to see in a traditional RGB image. So they're not the same, they, they are different. This one has more blue to it than this one. And this one's more of a, I guess I'd say it's an iridescent pinky purple compared to the the, I wouldn't call this salmon pink either, but it's getting that way. So I think they both pretty much fitting the bill of what I wanted. They take the advantages of narrowband, but they look much more like a traditional RGB image. And maybe depending on the, the, the data you're working with, sometimes the true color might come out to your liking. Sometimes Craig's natural color palette might come out to your liking. Um, but I think they're both doing a fantastic job. So what I'll do in the description down below, I'll link the um, the pixel math expressions here so that you can download them and, and use them if you like um, and see what it looks like with your data. Anyway, fairly quick one today. I just wanted to show off these, these natural narrowband palettes uh, for something a little bit different. Um, I think I'll be playing with them every now and then um, just, to, just to see what I can get out of them. Uh, I don't think it's going to work uh, to my liking, for every narrowband image, some of them just work exceptionally well with SHO. Most of them work beautifully with 4AX, uh, my favourite colour palette. Uh, but it's definitely something that, that for something like the Lagoon, um, and I think that the, the Tarantula Nebula is going to work wonderfully with that as well. Um, I think for some, Nebulosity is going to work fantastic. Thanks for watching.